is social media good or bad? In a Do nutshell. you think social media does more harm than good? being subtly manipulated by algorithms that are watching. One of the issues with social media is that people like it or loathe it, social media is pretty damn unavoidable these days. Even those without any interest in scrolling Instagram or TikTok may find themselves forced to use social media for professional purposes. That is the extent to which social media has become an unavoidable element of daily life. Yet, even for those who have little interest in social media, these platforms work hard to capture your attention and keep it as long as possible. Many of these secret tactics are hard to spot, so you'd best know what to look out for to make sure you are not falling into the traps that social media websites are laying down to catch you. Social Media Psychology They might seem like harmless platforms intended for connecting friends or sharing moments from daily life, but make no mistake, at the end of the day, every social media platform is, at its heart, a company. And what is the purpose of a company? To make profit. All of the social media companies we frequent make a profit from us, and the currency they do so with is our attention. You see, the longer a site holds our attention, the more data they get from us which can be sold to third parties, and the more time we spend exposed to the ads and sponsored content that they present us with. And as such, these social media companies invest vast resources into making sure their platforms are as addictive as possible. Beyond the social media sites themselves, users and popular content creators also practice their own litany of psychological tactics designed to grab and hold our attention. Being so focused on capturing the attention of social media users has created a feedback loop on the internet that pushes trends further and further into addictive directions. The content that becomes popular on social media also follows similar patterns of capitalizing on capturing and keeping your attention. And these tactics are important to be aware of in order to avoid becoming trapped by the vicious cycle of social media consumption. Number one, creates an obsession with reputation. Nowadays, social media plays an incredibly large role in people's daily lives. The vast majority of people use social media on a daily basis, and the interactions that they have there can go great lengths in determining how they feel about themselves. The reception that our social media activity is rewarded with can either bolster or destroy a person's self-esteem. And the internet, for the most part, is designed to encourage this way of thinking. The whole reason there are likes and public follow accounts and discovery pages dedicated to showing off the most popular social media posts all point to the fact that social media is meant to act as a popularity contest. Even if you don't intend to use social media to interact with others and are just there for entertainment or inspiration, the metrics of success on social media are pretty hard to ignore. Sure, some social media sites have experimented with ways to minimize the impact that these metrics have on our experience of the site. For example, Instagram's offered the option to hide like counts on posts. YouTube has hidden the number of dislikes that videos receive. And Tumblr never allowed users to see the follow accounts of others. And yet, despite these interventions, the obsession with reputation that develops on account of social media tactics is somewhat inevitable. Even if you are not aware of it on a conscious level, this is probably still true to some extent. Many people, particularly Sigma males, would consider themselves to be largely unaffected by social media's obsession with numbers and quantifiable popularity. And while on occasion this may indeed be true, the simple fact of the matter is that social media is conditioning us collectively as a society to view popularity as something that is indeed quantifiable and is possible to measure in numbers. Social media encourages this form of thinking and it takes real abstinence from likes, followers and views in order to escape the trap of thinking this way. Number two, glamorizing unhealthy lifestyles. Media of any sort has always had a reputation for portraying things larger than life. The behavior that people exhibit in the media is often blown out of proportion. Think of the movies, everything is always more epic on screen than in real life. Crises are always greater, tragedy is always more dramatic, and the parties are always way more wild and glamorous than in real life. Have you ever seen how high school parties look in the media? Flashing lights, half-naked girls who look about 25, expensive alcohol. Let me tell you, this is not how most people remember high school parties. 
And the same overblown portrayal of life found in traditional forms of media finds itself equally present on social media. People act happier than they are, and like to show their lives as being more glamorous than they truly are in reality. Unhealthy behaviours like reckless drinking, the use of dangerous, unregulated drugs, and irresponsible sexual behaviour are glamorised via social media. People like to show off their wild behaviour, yet we rarely get to see any of the consequences of these actions. Sure, the party looked great on Instagram, but did you get to see any pictures of the mighty hangover that followed the next day? As we navigate our way through the internet, it's important to bear in mind that what we see is only what we are being shown. For everything we see on social media, there is a whole wealth of unshown consequences. As fun and glamorous as they may look online, it's wise to remember that what we see is only the tip of the iceberg, and what lurks beneath is, nine times out of ten, far from glamorous. Number 3. Designed to be addictive As I mentioned earlier, social media profits off of capturing your attention. And for this reason, each social media company is staffed by a team of people working around the clock to ensure that their platform is as addictive as possible. And these platforms invest great time and resources into researching exactly what makes a person tick and how to get them to stick around even just a little bit longer. Have you ever noticed how whenever you refresh your social media feed or click away after you've been scrolling for a while, the page or feed will update with what it thinks is the most likely story you are to click on so that you keep viewing and repeat the whole cycle? All of the apps that you use have been tailor-made to ensure that you keep scrolling, reading, and clicking. And while you're using a social media app, it can feel like you are continuing to scroll simply out of your own free will. But when you take a step back and understand just how carefully these algorithms have been designed to activate the short-term, instant gratification dopamine receptors in your brain, you'll come to understand that you are literally being chemically conditioned to form an addiction to these apps and remain trapped as long as possible. Now, before I continue, if you're finding this content enjoyable or useful, please do take a quick second to hit the like button. It may seem like a small gesture, but it makes a huge difference to me and allows me to keep growing the channel and making more content just like this. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate every single one of you. And finally, number four, destroys meaningful communication. You don't have to spend a long time at all browsing the internet to understand what this point is all about. We live in a pretty tense period of time overall. With increased financial insecurity, many parts of the world on the brink of war, growing scarcity of resources and a climate disaster looming over our heads, it's no surprise that people seem to be more on edge than in the past. And this leads to people being quick to attack each other or to jump to defend themselves when they feel threatened. And with the added anonymity of the internet, divisions between individuals and groups in society only grow more inflamed. You only have to have a cursory scroll of the average newsfeed or YouTube comment section in order to find people at each other's throats in heated debate. The stakes of reaching this point of an argument are far lower online than in real life, as if you sink to attacking someone online, you can simply shut down the computer and log off without having to face the real-world consequences of losing your cool. And all of this serves to make social media a hotbed of division and empty arguments over the slightest things. By offering anonymity, social media goads us into getting worked up about the smallest things and traps us by offering unlimited opportunities to mount armor and become a keyboard warrior. Standing up for your beliefs online is easy, as you can pretty much always back out when the waters get too hot. And this ends up becoming a refuge for people who feel they have done their bit and maintain their strong opinions, and they can then excuse themselves from trying to create meaningful change in the real world. The empty sense of validation offered by social media bickering is an unfortunate method of trapping us online, as it has severe negative consequences in the real world. These are the most powerful and damaging tactics that social media has in order to trap us and make us ever more engrossed in the online world. Being aware of these tactics is the first and most crucial step toward resisting them. That's all for this one, and instead of telling you to go and watch another video, today I'm going to simply suggest you log off, go outside, and make some connections in the real world. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.